Don't forget to angle your ship when you're in a capital ship gunfight. You wanna see the effect? Watch this. I survive? He doesn't. See the difference? Hello, hello there and welcome back to War Thunder to the first impressions of the IGN Congo, a ship that I don't like but I actually love. It's fantastic and I also hope that you like the sound of me being recorded by my new microphone because the old one died and made recording uh, quite infuriating, frustrating and not sounding all that well. Let me know in the comment section. And yeah, the IGN Congo. In the stat card it says it's a battleship. The Scharnhorst is a battlecruiser according to Galchen and I would disagree on both. Uh, but the Congo is certainly a ship with big nasty guns that hurt the enemy quite a bit. So you can see me just pulverizing your cruisers, battle cruisers and battleships alike and um, the secret to that is that you basically have the same guns with the same ammunition as the IJN Huger but you have instead of 12 quote unquote only 8 of those guns. Uh, reload is roughly 30 seconds, uh, secondaries aren't that great, the AA is basically your cladded in 25 millimeter guns not the best but definitely better than nothing and the armor when used correctly is surprisingly tanky together with the float plane that can also cap quite efficiently so let's uh, start with the armor you have a main armor belt of 203 millimeters rolled cemented armor starting from the forward turret to the most rear turret and you also have a bulkhead at the front protecting the magazine of 279 millimeters and so you can angle the ship quite efficiently. You also have an upper belt of 152 millimeters or 6 inches and uh, the barbettes are 229 millimeters with the turret faces being 254 millimeters. Now that is not the world's greatest armor and it's not that much thicker in raw armor thickness than for instance the HMS Invincible which has a side main armor belt of 152 millimeters but when angled this ship is surprisingly tanky and can take quite a lot of damage um, but when it gets focused fired it dies rather quickly you have a little bit of an icebreaker uh, of 76 millimeters uh, and also on the rear and that gives the ship an overall quite tankiness that is surprising because I thought that the Congos would be really weak and yet when you give flat broadside there is not that much protecting uh, the guts. There is a little bit of a turtle back actually protecting the magazine area of uh, 70 millimeters and the deck being 102 millimeters so that's quite surprising but the machinery itself is not that protected. So the ship is a bit surprising and also the magazines are lying laying uh, quite low under the waterline so you don't really blow up but you lose your turrets quite regularly and also the gun barrels get knocked out too often for my taste and uh, one of the changes that Gaijin did was increasing the repair times globally by roughly 50% or 100% um, it's much longer and it really hurts when you get hit I don't agree to that change now Let's have a look at this scene that I'll show you in full length. Um, I'm tanking basically two US battleships. Um, it's both the Wyoming and uh, the other one, the North Dakota. And yeah, those 12 inch gun armed ships not just only have smaller guns than me, but they have either HE or AP. I have SAP, which still kills because I have the 14 inch Huger guns and um, they fire the SAP that I mentioned. Now overall you have three shell types. You have the stock um, you have the stock HE shell, the 356 millimeter common type zero with 32.45 kilograms of TNT equivalent, 85 millimeters of HE penetration and they hurt quite a bit. But as a tier 1 modification, you have the 
356 millimeter type 91 APC APCBC round with uh, 12.21 kilograms of TNT equivalent and up to 635 millimeters of penetration and at 10 kilometers it's still 431 millimeters of penetration but it's AP it, it, it just fades away in comparison to the 356 millimeter ordinary SAP SAP CBC round that features a whopping 68.64 kilograms of TNT, has 301 millimeters of penetration at point blank range and at 10 kilometers, uh, 199. And that lets you blow up ships at basically uh, any range, but the shorter um, away they are from you or the, the <laughs> closer they are, just forgot to speak here English for a moment, um, the more likely it is. But Again, here, look at this scene. I tank their shells and I fire at them. Now, there is one strange thing. The firing angles of the guns are pretty good. But um, when you do some reverse angling compared to forward angling, the most forward gun turret, despite having also fantastic firing angles, just isn't active. And I have no logical explanation why that is. So here I only fire with uh, three gun turrets and um, despite being on much lower health than them, I might have won that gunfight at this point even with just three out of the four turrets, uh, but the time ran out. So the guns are absolutely nasty. The armor is surprisingly effective even versus other big gun ships um, that are the usual killers and I absolutely can recommend the ship being at battle rating 6.3 coming after the IGA Nikoma in the tech tree um, I highly recommend you researching it especially if you have already the Huga. Now the repair costs on the Huga are over 61,000 civil lines and on the Congo it's quote unquote a mere 40,000 civil lines. So it's a good backup, it's a bit faster with a top speed of 56 kilometers per hour compared to 44 on the Huga. That makes you much more uh, maneuverable for dodging a torpedo at top speed than the Huga and um, you feel a little bit the power difference in, in firepower. Um, but it's still pretty okay, especially for the reduced battle rating. And uh, I, again, can recommend it. Now, the AA, all the 25 millimeters. Um, the single 25 millimeter isn't good. Low rate of fire, uh, low damage. Uh, you have a magazine with a reload. But because you have so many of them, uh, 8 twin, 30 single, and 18 triple mounts, with 150,000 rounds of combined ammunition uh, together with your 6 5 inch um, AA twin mountings lets you have this, this, this spider net that eventually you catch a plane into it if it is uh, equipped with short range weapons. It might not defend you in time but it still might kill the enemy. Sorry about here not having any sound. The recording software decided to not record this glorious first strike, uh, which was absolutely filthy. So this ship is fantastic. Now, why does the USS Arizona suck, in my opinion, so much in comparison? Well, the USS Arizona is, with the all or nothing armor scheme, better protected. It's even better at angling, but it is slower. And um, yeah, you have no SAP. You have only AP or HE, and both are not that great. And then you have fully stuck a reload of 65 seconds. And that combined with the ever reliable, unreliable aiming system is the cause of so much frustration that I basically quit within the second game of it because it was just, I, I, I felt my brain dying there. It was one of the most disappointing, frustrating, infuriating experience that I ever had. And that's a little bit of a Russian bias moment because yes, the uh, triple 14 inch gun turrets on the USS Arizona didn't have the fastest reload. But 
so we have um, where this was mentioned in, in literature and in research, etc. But uh, Gaichin never thought this being a problem with the Voroshilov, with the Kirov, or with the Maxim Gorky's triple. Uh, 180 millimeter guns which also had an equally long reload that in liter literature was mentioned to be longer than the ones of some battleships however it still got the what 11 second reload that's just a russian bias moment right there um but about the congo it's it's fantastic and i like it you should definitely recommend it and don't forget to angle because this ship heavily rewards it that's it for me today thanks for watching thanks for listening please give this video a like with it share it with your friends and clan mates and we will see each other on the waves in the skies and on the battlefields of war thunder